welcome to the Coach Brian Moore Show. Margaret Ann Prater here alongside Coach Brian Moore. And just a reminder, you can grab this episode on YouTube every week. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And then also watch the NFHS Network on Fridays where we've got the live broadcast. Before we begin, Coach, got to run through those sponsors every week. Life Church, Agency on Main, Marmac Commercial Real Estate, Peck Funeral Home, of course, Eddie Pruitt Ford, Drake Eye Center, and Coleman Regional Hospital. Ah, let's breathe a minute. Um, we're 7-0. You beat Muscle Shoals 29-26. And, of course, i got to have some tongue-in-cheek moment. I was like, should we hand out Tums? Do we need paper bags? Um, we definitely, that was our toughest game yet. No doubt. They're really good and, uh, and, and played extremely well um, on the road. And, you know, we fought. And uh, that was a, a classic high school football game for sure. Um, we talked a lot about... Uh, how short of a time that we've trailed this year. Yep. Uh, at Oxford, it was just a little bit. This game was back and forth. We never held on to that lead. Right. I mean, we finally got it with 17 seconds to go. What can you say about the kids' composure through all this? Well, I think the best teams learn how to win in, in, in many different ways, and, and we have. You know, we had the game we had to hold on against Gaston. We had a game, you know, against Oxford, offensive explosion at the end with some, you know, non-offensive touchdowns. And then to come from behind, you know, not only with the right there at the two-minute drive, but also the five-minute mark when Jack scored, you know, to go up and take that lead then too. Uh, just back and forth, slugfest. I mean, the, you know, again, Muscle Shoals is really good. And uh, it's the second time we've had to go on the road, you know, in two years. And, and on top of that, you know, third game in a row you know, on a long road trip, that's tough to do. And just proud of our kids, uh, you know, and hopefully we can get back going this week. But it's been a, it's been a grind for sure. All right. And that was the first nail biter I can recall in your tenure here. Have you had a lot of those? <laughs> no, not a lot, you know, but the, but the I will say the ones that we've had that have been close, we found ways to win, you know, and, and that's a testament to our kids and, you know, and our coaching and, and uh, our coaching staff just have done a great job of preparing into the game scenarios. You know, there wasn't a moment I didn't think, you know, in the game where we didn't have an answer for, you know, whatever it might be from, you know, obviously the last two minute drive, um, the defensive stand right there where they, you know, got it in almost field goal range, you know, how we play that. Uh, there was a lot to do with that as far as our preparation. So I was proud of our kids to, to, to do that and then not let the moment be too big. You know, that, that can be a deal too. They executed like we've done and, uh, you know, and, and, and finished a great game. <laughs> um, and I'm going to go off book. I'm asking for the people at home because this was not our fan question of the week. Penalties. Yep. How many <clears throat> were there? It seemed like as soon as we would get a drive going, yeah. we would get one to bring us back. Or as soon as we had stopped Muscle Shoals, there would be a penalty to extend their drive. So where were we? Yeah, I think there were eight total penalties on us, um, but there were big ones. You know, it's a holding or a face mask that extended a drive, three of which um, we didn't handle ourselves very well, you know, and so – those guys paid the price for that yesterday, you know, with some plate pushes. So, uh, but we've got to be better, you know, in big moments, we can't, you know, the moment was huge and they're still 17, 18 year old kids. You know I mean? They, when there's 10,000 people watching you and, and uh, the adrenaline and emotions are where they were, you know, it, it's tough sometimes. And, uh, but we've got to be better because, you know, a couple of those, we kept them on the field and let them extend drives and, uh, and then horrible field position, you know, for us, as far as having a penalty after a touchdown and them starting at midfield on a drive where we needed them to have to go 80, you know? And so we've got to handle ourselves a little bit better, but again, it's, it, that's huge to go through that now to where you don't do that again in the playoffs. And survive. All right, we'll be right, right back. We're taking a break. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. Peck Funeral Home is owned and operated by folks who live in the same communities they serve. Our employees are the heart of our business. The funeral home proudly employs over 30 local individuals. Currently, the funeral home is managed by Jeff Halbrooks, who has held that position for over 20 years. Our goal is simple and has remained the same now since 1929. Peck Funeral Home strives to provide genuine service from the heart. All right, we're here with our Eddie Put Forward Player of the Week, Peyton Steele. And Peyton, great job this season so far. We've been wanting to get you in here earlier, but it just hadn't kind of worked out. But I'm so glad you're here today. So let's start first softball question. Give me your favorite moment so far this season. It can be practice. It can be gameplay. It can be whatever you want. Um, probably in Austin. You know, that was my my hometown. I used to go to Austin, so that, that's probably my favorite part so far. That's the one you had circled on the calendar, preseason show. Okay, all right, all right. that's good. Um, what about playing football makes you a better baseball player? Um, it keeps me in shape, you know, makes me stronger, and it uh, teaches me perseverance, you know. It 
makes me work hard through struggles. Like practicing isn't easy. Games aren't always easy. Like pa the past Friday, that wasn't easy at all. So it just kind of teaches me lessons of perseverance and struggle. Well, on a personal note, Real Tide, and boy, they need your bat right now. <laughs> so I'm hoping when you go down there, you can change stuff because I live and die with that baseball team. It's killing me. Um, so baseball or football? And then if you didn't want to choose those two, is there another sport you wish you were playing that you just don't have time for? Um, I used to play basketball, but I kind of gave that up when I moved to Hartsville. I, I, love, I like baseball better, but football was my first love. I always wanted to be a football player, but then I just kind of gradually got better at baseball. So baseball is probably my favorite. Okay, that's, that's a great answer. Um, and I always ask this every year, Every time, uh, favorite part of practice? What's your favorite drill you guys um, do? I like one-on-ones that, you know, where a, de a defensive back covers a wide receiver. That's probably my favorite. So who are you covering? Most of the time it's Eli Tidwell. Sometimes I'll guard Rye. So it's a challenge. Yeah, those guys are good. We okay. compete, yeah. yeah. All right, well, and my final question, we've seen lots of improvement and players across the board, people stepping up that we didn't know were gonna step up. So I've been asking uh, players of the week, Who's that guy that we're just going to be looking for? You know, we're about to go into Athens, Decatur, then Bob Jones, and hopefully a couple, three rounds deep in the playoffs at least. So who are we looking for that's going to come out of nowhere and just kind of surprise us all? Um, I think Landon Blackwood's had a really good season. You know, he hasn't had much varsity experience, and uh, he's he's normally a quarterback, and he stepped up as a wide receiver, and he he's not really in the spotlight as much as he should be. I feel like he he – pushes itself in practice and helps the team out a lot more than a lot of other people think. That's a great answer. You're really good. we got to have you back. <laughs> Thanks so much, Peyton. We'll be right back. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. All right, we're back with the Coach Brian Moore Show. Coach, two words, Ralph Fletcher. <laughs> Glad he plays for us, you know. Uh, he, uh, I mean, he's just dynamic. And, and to fight through, you know, he had a little ankle deal, and uh, you sure couldn't tell it on the last run. But he, uh, he's a special kid, you know, and, and uh, there's a lot that goes along with that with him. You know, our offensive line had some moments where they really played well. I mean, there were some moments we wish we were a little better. You know, they had some stuff to do with that 56 of the lineman in here is really good, but we found some running lanes and, and we ran it better Friday than we have all year. Mm -hmm. um, he had, you know, 200 yards on 12 carries. That's, that's a pretty good little average and, right. um, and finish, you know, finish drives. And it wasn't all, you know, out in space running for 50 yards. There were some tough yards in there, you know, one yard gains that were maybe a guy was in the backfield and he spun off and made a play. So yeah, he's really gotten better. And, uh, he continues to, uh, I mean, amaze me, to be honest with you. Just some of the things that he can do with the football is incredible. But, again, a lot of – Zeke McCann played really well as, as our fullback. And, you know, Jack had some really tough runs. And our receivers blocked their tails off. I mean, that last run, you know, I'm going to show for the play of the game. But, you know, Eli Tidwell had an amazing block on that play. And so many guys are playing with tremendous effort. Um, but, yeah, Rise a special player. Well, and it, his run after contact, yep. I think, is where he's really – So much stronger, you know, yeah. bigger this year. And I think that's going to make a difference with, you know, his recruitment and uh, that sort of thing as well. Well, um, we scored three of our four touchdowns on kind of big plays, right after big plays. Yep. Um, what does that say from an explosive perspective that you know your guys can score quickly if they need to? Uh, it's big. You know, one thing that it does is, you know, we're and we're managing this with our defensive staff um, – is, is just kind of the, the uh, play count. You know, it's always been in the, our opponent's favor, which is not what you like, but we can score so fast that you can't stop that. Like, you don't want to say, no, don't go score, you know, yeah, obviously. Uh, but but so we, we, we rotate guys and we manage that defensively, but we, we can score fast and we are very explosive. Eli, Zay, Rye, all those guys can score from Jack, can score from distance, you know, and, um, you know, even Zeke had a really explosive play down there in the red zone. That was huge, a huge was. play in the I got game. Any more questions. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it is. Uh, but you do have to manage it, um, but it's a good problem to have. Well, and I also want to highlight your two-point conversion. 
you know, don't y'all just keep a couple of plays? I think y'all have had two of those so far, so right. we're going to have to regroup. and. Yeah, we re, yeah, but that's the fun part. we got a lot of guys. It was like a text group, you know, who can come up with the best two-point play now that we've used Because once we use it, we use it, yeah. I'll go back to it. But right. we practiced them. You know, that was a play that we had practiced. And for Jack to get the ball to land it on the back line, he was not option one on the play. But to keep it alive, that was a huge play, right? Because right. then it's a field goal difference. So even if the kid makes it at the end, it's we're a tie ball team, game, yeah. and, we, and we still got, you know, football to play. Well, and then um, this is the first time I would say an opposing team won field position. Yeah. So what did Muscle Shoals do that others did? Well, we didn't kick the ball in the end zone, for one, and we did a horrible job covering. Um, worked on that real hard, uh, both with our staff yesterday as far as, you know, what do we need to do? Do we need to structure our kickoff different? You know, a lot of ideas on the table. Do we need to look at different personnel there? And so we're going to look at both those things today at practice. Um, but ultimately, we have to have a plan when the wind is blowing, because it was, and we, and we didn't kick the ball in the end zone. But for them, heck, they kicked it in the end zone, um, and they started at the minus 45, we started at the minus 25. And so we have been up 20 yards instead of down 20 right. yards basically every week. Um, so that was a catastrophic, because, I mean, they kicked five field goals. Well, all five of those would have been punts, right? Had they not. So we didn't do a very good job of putting our defense in good spots, but, you know, credit our defense for fighting and forcing those field goals in those moments. Exactly. Um, you had your highest rushing total of the year. We talked about that, 247 yards, averaging 10.3 yards per carry. Now, 200 of those yards came from Rye Fletcher. Um, I was there, you know, we, we used him a lot. Yep. D did that surprise you that that was how we were going to get our yards on the ground? Because, you know, you were talking about that balance. Right. Well, I think, you know, we were pretty close to being balanced. I think Jack had close to 200 yards passing. Um, we used Lincoln a little bit, but we didn't have a lot of snaps. I mean, 46 snaps, 47 snaps, something like that was all we had in the game. We'd like to have Lincoln up around 10 carries. You know, Jack didn't run it as much as right. he had. I think two of those runs were scrambles for Jack. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there weren't a lot of plays in the game. I mean, for us, it was either three and out, not great, penalty, or explosive play. So it was just a kind of a weird night offensively. We never got in very good rhythm. You know, a year ago we went to Muscle Shoals, we had great rhythm. Mm -hmm. You know, it was almost like a masterpiece offensively. We never played that well. It was like um, Austin. It was. Year. That's right, exactly. And, and we were really efficient and stayed on the field and had no three and outs. And then Friday we just weren't as good. Again, some of that was behind the chains. I mean, I think three different drives we were – first and 20, you know, and so that's tough to overcome. But, you know, again, credit our kids to keep playing, you know, in those moments. But we would like to have Lincoln carry it a little bit more. And, you know, we're only a couple of weeks from Gage Ombi being eligible. He's been here almost a year now. Um, and he's a guy that can play, you know, varsity football. So that will be helpful for us to keep those carries down for Rye. Well, and I want to highlight, you know, we've talked about those receivers, but I give you a moment to talk about, you know, Zay made some really tough catches. Eli is still, yep. you know, and I talked to his <clears throat> team. I love to talk to the kids about what they think about the game when they come to class. And they were talking about, you know, he, not only is he susceptibly fast, he's so strong. Yeah, he's gotten really strong. And, you know, that he's so hard to bring him down. I, I just, and then, of course, Zeke. Making, he wasn't making those catches last no year. No doubt, not close. I mean, that you know, again, balance for us as far as who we throw it to. I do want to mention Isaiah. I thought Isaiah probably played his best game it was as a Hartzell Tiger. I mean, you know, again, didn't have 150 yards and three touchdowns, but blocked his tail off. Caught tough. tough <clears> you know, passes. what I'm going to show for the play of the game, you're going to see the whole two-minute drive. I want to go through that. And you're going to see Isaiah catch a little split flow deal first, run over a linebacker and make close to a first down. And then you're going to see him catch a post-corner ball that was an incredible play to get us to midfield where we have, actually have a, you know, a fighter's chance to score a touchdown. So I thought Zay played really well. Eli, of course, continues to do his thing. Landon Blackwood had two catches and a big two-point play. Zeke had an explosive play, which – a year ago, I said Zeke can't make an explosive play, but uh, he's, he, great. he's gotten so much better. Credit to our, our strength stuff and our movement stuff to get him a little bit faster, um, a little bit more agile, and he's doing a really good job with that. Well, and then this is our moment I want to talk about special teams play because, honestly, that's what it came down to. You know, you had Peyton Steele, our player of the game, who did great defensively, but his uh, impact on special yep. teams is second to none. All right, he got a hold of one ball, and, you know, he tipped it, right. and he missed the field goal. Right. But then I think the fact that he rushed their kicker right. so much – that may have thrown up that timing. No doubt. I mean, you can feel that. Just like a quarterback who's getting pressure, you know, the rush might not get there, but you can feel that they're there. Same thing with Peyton. You know, a year ago, we didn't do a very good job of rushing PATs. And I think a sign of a team that, that cares, right, is when you give up a touchdown or, or a long drive or whatever and they're going to kick a field goal. If you go after that, that kick, that speaks volumes. And I think it affected the kid in the last kick. You know, it was our super long field goal, but the fact that Peyton was relentless and Trace Odin was relentless getting back there too, you know, we, we affected that kick. And, yeah, Peyton blocking that was huge. Um, but, yeah, outside of our kickoff group, I thought our special teams played extremely well. We, we averaged almost 40 yards a punt which was huge. We had a couple we pinned down inside the 10. 
Um, we changed field position with that. Eli handled a bad snap um, that skipped to him. He picked it up and booted it 46 yards. I mean, stuff like that's huge. And, um, and then our punt return, Rye had a great uh, deal where they were in plus territory punt and he drew them away from the punt and the ball went in the end zone. So you're not starting at the one yard line um, that we coach and work on all the time. Uh, so again, outside of kickoff, I thought we were great on special teams. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break. You're watching Coach Brian Moore show. There are many ways of doing business today. Hello? Call centers, mobile apps. Right away. But when it comes to what really matters, our way is pretty simple. To be there when you need us most. That's the quality of your independent agent and the company that stands behind them. Pet Glasgow Agency is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Hi, welcome back to Coach Brian Moore Show. I got a special a guest, or are you going to be a permanent fixture? Um, I'll do whatever Coach okay. Moore wants. <laughs> <laughs> we got our defensive coordinator, Bert Newton, with us today. <clears throat> Bert, let's talk about defense. We gave up our highest point total all year, but I think this was the best team we faced. Uh, what kind of challenges did you see defensively? Well, they were the most physical team we faced by far. Um, had really good running backs. The quarterback, obviously, was um, extremely elusive and could score at any moment. Um, and uh, I was real proud of our guys, though. We forced five field goals. And to me, that's when you've been on the field and you have that toughness to say, we're going to bow up down here and make them at least kick a, field, I mean, kick a field goal and not score seven. And to me, that's the big difference in the game there. Um, you know, if, they, if one of those five forced field goals is a, is a touchdown, we, we lose. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, that's awesome. Let's talk about Peyton Steele. He was our player of the game. Uh, he's, he's everywhere. I see him on special teams. I see him, you know, all over the field. Uh, and it seems like he's an emotional leader, too. Can you talk about his leadership and his performance so far? Yes, uh, so uh, most of the game had 13 tackles. Um, the thing that I'm most proud about him, I knew he was going to be able to do that um, if, th if things ever broke on scrimmage. And sometimes he gets into the on scrimmage as well. But um, the thing that I'm most proud about him this year is he's um, leading the secondary. And when I say he's leading, like he, he gets the calls to him. Um, he's locked in like that in practice. He's always, re you know, he's, he's leading. And that's been, that's been big. Um, you know, he played a little bit for us as my um, – my last year before I came back as a freshman, and that, that wasn't on the table then. Um, but you can see he's, how he's developed and um, the confidence he has, and, and he's not letting anything behind him, which is huge in our, in our, in our defense because he's the, you know, he's the last guy. So um, he had a heck of a night. Um, let's talk about the last two games I've been seeing some face mask penalties. I know they're not coached to do that. Right. Um, What's going on there? Why, why are we getting that? Um, because we're playing hard and relentless and there's good backs and you grab a hold of anything you can because they're moving and, and jetting. And some of them have not been like, there was one the other night, he literally, I'm not going to do it to you, but he like wrapped his hand around the guy's helmet and it, it wasn't a face mask. And so some of them, and there was, there was a, you know, uh, there's been some phantom ones here on the road some too. So, um, but we just got to teach them to, to put their face mask in there and, and club around the body and, and don't do that. I was kind of alluding to that, yeah. but thank you. <laughs> Uh, best QB you faced so far this season. Uh, this guy looked like he was really fast and could throw it when he needed to. He was, was he extremely the fast. Ah, the kid at Oxford was the best throwing it for sure. Okay. Um, but uh, this guy is, you almost want him to throw it. You don't want him to pull it down and run it. Um, but yes, he, he can throw, he, he can run. He was a dual threat quarterback um, the other night and, and really good player. Um, the big 65 yard run, uh, you know, if you make one false, you know, if you make one, one bad move in the box, he can, he can take it to the house. Uh, yeah, his horizontal movement was what got me. He would just come off that snap and just be, be gone. Um, how much new stuff had Muscle Shoals say for this game? <laughs> I would say at halftime, uh, one of our coaches said, well, they have literally been holding back a whole season for this game. And I said, you're right. They, uh, they, this was their Super Bowl. Um, I think, you know, not many teams go up there and beat them. And we have three times now um, since I started here. And um, they had 17 senior starters, and, um, and this, was, this, was, this was their Super Bowl. And, and, you know, for us to go in there and not play well and have the field position issues with the kickoff uh, coverage and, and, and them to play their best and have their best plan, you know, they, they could possibly have for Hartzell, um, especially their plan for our, for our defense, um, for us to steal a win there was unbelievable. And it's because of the, you know, the explosive plays on offense, but also how gritty our defense was and how hard they played. All right, one more question. You're off the hook. All right. Uh, how proud are you guys with this road trip and how well they've done? Um, it's been great. It's been unbelievable. It's been three tough weeks on the road. They've been locked in in practice. Um, like I said it's, it's been it's been great. They've handled the travel like a veteran team. We hadn't had any issues on buses or 
people late or any of that stuff that you're people forgetting their whatever their pants or whatever i mean uh so they, they've been great and the, i think the the key is for next week for them to understand we got another it's a, it's a 30 minute road trip but it's the same deal we're playing a quality opponent they lost most of shoals by one score um and the record doesn't say it but they are a quality opponent that can win and right. um we, our kids have got to make sure that's our challenge this week to make sure they know that right because decatur and a possible undefeated matchup waits two weeks down the road that's right Okay. Well, thanks so much, Bert. Thanks for you having me. Really good. Appreciate it. We at Eddie Print Ford are so excited about another great year of Friday Night Lights and Hartsville football. Go Tigers! For this week's play of the game, we're going to watch a series. We're going to watch a two-minute drive. Uh, so one, my one thing on the on the headset is, is to always get the drive going. Uh, when you're in a two-minute scenario, make that first first down, get the ball moving. The scenario, there's a minute 21 left. We've got two timeouts. Uh, we throw a little split flow zone right here to Zay, trying to make a first down. They do a great job of reading it. Zay absolutely runs over the guy here. Okay, and ends up making you know six, seven yards, which was huge. We got to the line of scrimmage for the next snap really fast. Uh, and then this, to me, maybe even more than Rye's run was the play of the game. Isaiah First almost comes out of this. This is a little po uh, post-corner ball. Um, great route, almost scores it right there. Uh, but to get out of bounds, now we're up to midfield. Uh, there's about 45 seconds left in the game. Uh, and we've got an opportunity to run some basic normal offense, especially with those two timeouts. Uh, Jack right here, huge play as far as the scramble. Uh, that's huge. That guy weighs 215 pounds coming out of that. Uh, gets up to a first down marker. They give us the first down there. Uh, and then right here, uh, throw the ball down the field. Got a shot with Eli. Love the matchup right there. Uh, and then obviously this to finish the game right here with the play of the game from Rye. But, I, you know, obviously super talented, uh, did his thing. But watch the block and watch Eli stay connected to the linebacker. Watch Zeke seal that in. Okay, quick kick by Andrew right there. Stinson getting around, getting in the way. And then here he goes. Unbelievable run. Obviously massive play in the game, but so much more than just that run uh, went into the two-minute drive. Great call by Coach Lang, great call by our offensive staff. Uh, again, nobody panicked, everybody stayed calm, and obviously play of the game. Coach Moore back here. Uh, Coach, let's talk about Athens. Um, side of the worst game in your three years here, 19-6 loss. <laughs> just going to throw that out there. No start doubt. Off. I agree with you 100%. It was, it was uh, we just didn't play well. We got dominated. And uh, we had to change the way we went about our business a little bit. And uh, it was a wake-up call. I mean, since that game, we've won a lot of games here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think sometimes it requires that. But I am eager to go there um, and play again and sort of make that right you know exactly. and uh so but yeah i mean we we certainly have gotten better since that point it's a different ball club most of the kids are still here um but uh but we're excited to play yeah you think about how young they were two years ago and you still yeah. basically got the same team uh athens two and four uh naked eye you're gonna be like ah that's easy yeah. but they they gave muscle shoals all they could handle no and then some Athens is not going to lay down their story program right so what are you guys doing to good skill for kids back too you know they, their best player four um, hadn't played until this past game with Coleman. And so, yeah, that may be an MCL deal or something. I'm not exactly sure, but um, he's back. And he was a safety last year as a dynamic player. That same kid. Yep, okay. he's a good player. He's good. Uh, yeah, four, two, and eight. Um, they're three skill guys offensively. Quarterback is uh, Coach Gross's son, who, you know, how that goes. I mean, he knows the game. He, he keeps them within, you know, plays within himself, does a good job, throws the ball better than the kid did, did a year ago. And, um, you know, they got some dy dynamic guys. And then defensively, they're so different structurally that it's, it, it's, a, it's a deal um, to prepare. It's a, it's a totally different scheme than we, we ever see. Um, and they know what they're doing with it. And so, again, two years ago, we struggled with it. Last year, we had more success. But remember, last year, they were up in the third quarter on us at home. And uh, so we're going to have to play really well. They always play us really tough. Well, and, you know, I talked a little bit to Coach Newton about this. 
you got Athens, and like I said, you're going to see that two and four, and then you think biggest rivalry yep. for <clears throat> Hartzell is Decatur. I mean, it always has been. That's when Grandma and Grandpa get to talking about it. Right. You know, we're looking at possibly two undefeated teams playing for the region championship, yep. not this Friday, but next. So right. how do you keep these guys tuned in for this last road trip? Well, it's scared, it's fourth uh, game on the road. It scares me, to be honest with you. And I think it's something you talk about. Um, talked about it with the staff in our staff meeting. Talked about it with the kids yesterday at team meeting and today during Character Ed. Just, you know, hey, heads up, man. Let's, you know, expose the issue. This could be a problem. But it's all about today and tomorrow. It's all about the preparation early in the week. You know, if you come out, you have great practices Monday and Tuesday. Then you'll be you'll be okay. You know, then you'll you can expect to play well. You know, you don't know if you can win, but you'll be expect to play well. But you know, we just have to prepare well today and and understand that it's not over. You know, I had somebody say, uh, one of the key has a young one say something about the region championship Friday, and I of course shut that down very quickly because um, that's not true. I mean, we still have two huge region games coming up that can decide not only first seed but all the seeding really. Right. And so we've got a lot of work left to do here, and uh, so I think our kids understand that. They know they're they're mission driven. They understand the end result and you know what they're going to have to do to to win. And and uh, I think we'll be ready to go. But again, a lot of it will have to do with t today and tomorrow. All right, let's just keep on going. We've had enough breaks, I think. Let's do the Eddie Pruitt Ford fan question of the week. Looking forward to it. Dana McCutcheon. Yep. Um, she wanted to know what your thought process was on the kickoff with 17 seconds to go. Well, there was, uh, you know, we're trying to squib it, um, and we didn't squib it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we've got to do a better <laughs> job. Uh, so, uh, anyway, we're going to practice that a little bit more uh, starting today. We did this morning. Um, but obviously we don't want to kick it deep, you know, uh, very first one, you know, we, the guy took back for a touchdown. We can't have that happen again. Uh, but we don't want to give them the ball up at midfield, you know, for goodness right. sakes. I mean, they, they've got a kicker that's 50 plus, you know, that can kick it. And so that was a tough deal. Uh, it's a tough night when you can't kick it in the end zone, but ultimately we've got to be able to squib it and get the guy on the ground. So we're going to do a little, a little bit more of that, um, today. And, uh, I've got to do a better job of preparing both our kicker and our kicking team for those end of the game scenarios. We've done it, um, but it was good to do it live. I know it made everybody, it made, you know, I was tight over there too. I, I can feel everybody's uh, deal there, but we've got to do a little bit better job to finish. All right. Well, and that's been this week's Coach Brian Moore Show. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. I'm Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, and I'm here to tell you about the Big Green Egg, the ultimate cooking experience. The versatility of the Big Green Egg is unmatched. It delivers big results as a grill, a smoker, and even an outdoor oven. Grill burgers, kebabs, steaks at 800 degrees, slow smoke a perfect slab of ribs, and even bake a crispy pizza. When the doctor cooks, I demand the best, and that's why I cook on the Big Green Egg, the ultimate cooking experience. <laughs> High Athletics. Starting on Wednesday, October 5th, we've got no athletic events, but everybody's taking a standardized test, so it's testing day here at Hartsville High School. Thursday, October 6th, 7th and 8th grade football are going to host Austin at J.P. Kane. Friday, October the 7th, everybody's traveling. Football's going to Athens and volleyball is going to Homewood to a tournament. Saturday, October the 8th, volleyball is going to be at Homewood at a tournament. Got not a lot of action this weekend. Uh, Monday, October 10th, Ninth grade and JV football will host Athens here at J.P. Kane. And on Tuesday, October 11th, volleyball is going to travel to Northridge and cross country is going to travel to Athens Bible. That's this week in Hartsville High Athletics.